Hi everybody, my name is Matt Cowger, and this is a demo that we prepared. I wanted to show you uh, two things, really. First, the value of Viper and its data services and the fact that they really work with existing applications, and two, how modern third platform and PaaS-based applications can really improve the agility and, and things like that. So what I want to show you is this application that we built uh, that's really too relatively simple. It's only 150 lines long. Uh, that includes all the white spaces and comments. And the big thing here is that I'm using the Boto library. Now this is the library that Amazon provides in order for programmers and, and developers to use their simple storage service, or S3, uh, with Python uh, tools and, and languages and things like that. Uh, this, the nice thing about this is that it's actually relatively simple to use. Now, for me, I wanted to be able to write to my private cloud. I wanted to write this data that I'm gathering to my private cloud. So let's take a look at this data that I'm, that I'm actually using. So here's my application. This is running live right now. Uh, it's at running on Pivotal Cloud Foundry at cfapps.io. And all it does is it simply watches a Twitter hashtag and downloads all the images associated with that hashtag and then shows them into this rotating carousel here. Now, right now, I'm using the MTV hottest hashtag, and I simply use that because it had a lot of pictures to test with. But really, I'd rather show off uh, that we're using something else. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use the VMworld hashtag. I'm gonna change that to VMworld because I think that's more relevant for what we're doing. And again, we're using my private Viper data services instance that I have available here, but using the existing S3 compatible protocols to do it. Now, what I'm gonna do is, is I wanna actually push this change out live. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna log into my Cloud Foundry account, and I'm gonna ask it to simply show me all of my applications. And there's my, there's my application right here called VT. That's, it's already in a started state. And as you can see, it's running just fine. But now I've made this change. So what I want to do is I'm going to do a CF push VT of my app. Basically, I'm telling Cloud Foundry that I want to push this new version of this code. So what it's actually happening here under the hood is, is really pretty fascinating. We take all 181K worth of files, all 33 files that make up my application, and we, we package them all together uh, in, into basically what is effectively a, a compressed set of of data. We then go and we stop the application that's running, and I can show you that it is in fact stopped, not working anymore. And this time, what we're going to do is we're actually going to upload uh, this new application. But what's going to happen here is that it downloads our app package, but it also notices that, hey, you're using Python, and I know how to deal with Python. Uh, it notices that I'm using Python 2.74. And it has also noticed that I have a bunch of requirements that I've specified that my application needs in order to run. So the, all of these requirements that I've specified here. It knows how to grab those and install them into a Python environment. It takes all of that together, my application itself, as well as all the Python and modules that Python requires to run, and we package them together into a 32 meg droplet. And we start upload those and start them into a brand new container, uh, a warden container. So once that's started, uh, we can see that things, things are good to go. We're using 65 meg of memory and 126 meg of, of disk. And let's check to see if this is actually running. So this is actually running again, and now you're seeing all of the images that are associated with the VMworld hashtag. This is incredibly useful in, in less than just a few minutes, I was able to upload an entirely new version of this application and get it running live. What's even better is that I can continue to use other tools with my existing Viper instance. For example, this one is called Cyberduck, and uh, it's basically just a browser for FTP and S3 and that sort of thing. So here's an example image. Um, this is an image that I posted recently. Uh, it's actually of my daughter in a pool. Uh, that I posted with the VMworld hashtag, saying that I was ready for VMworld to get started. And it's up here in Viper, uh, easily usable using existing standard tools. So this combination of 
using modern tools like Viper to keep my data uh, internal and where I want it, as well as being able to make changes to my application and push them out quickly and easily really gives me the agility that I need to satisfy my business users and their changing requirements, but also my security teams and my storage teams requirements around data management and data lifecycle and those sorts of things. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy the rest of VMworld.